The space we're standing on was originally made by Nash to rehouse the burials that he disturbed around the church. He created a hard burial service with vaults below us. The principles of our scheme have been to create a series of subterranean spaces, removing Nash's burial vaults. So this is the third cycle of urban renewal and to create a space to the east of the church which is in contrast to the intense use of Trafalgar Square to the west. So this is a place of quietude, simple rest in a very, very busy and complicated urban setting. The first thing was to make this a much wider public space, taking the railings right back close to Gibbs's church and placing into this a pavilion that allows entrance to the spaces below. Further down church path is the inverse of the positive pavilion, a light well that runs through two stories and admits light and air to the underground spaces. The pavilion is set as the light well is on a granite base its walls are made of glass, ghosting the architect's work around it. It's conceived of as a crystal, which casts no shadow, as a metaphor for the soul. And it's topped by this stainless steel roof, which has at its center an oculus that admits light into it from the sky and creates the geometry that will take you downstairs. Walking down the stairs of the pavilion, we arrive at this new subterranean level, the equivalent of the new church path above us. This space has at one end the shop, a new shop and ticketing area, information point that leads through into the crypt underneath the church itself. And in the middle is the church hall, which is a double height space timber lined at the lower level with a clerestory of light so that as you come down the stairs into the space you never lose that sight line. At the other end is the light well. It's a double height space with glass walls that provides a centre for the underground territory and the connection to the various parts of the community. From here, you also get the new perspective of the spire and body of Gibbs's church from this lower ground level. The east-west axis underground terminates in this space, the Dick Shepherd Chapel, named after the vicar who opened up the crypt of the church to soldiers in the First World War. It's a spiral journey that takes you through low spaces and then into this taller space with a light well over the altar. The fins on the other side are vertical in opposition to the horizontal character of the spaces we've been through. This is the new music rehearsal space. We are below the churchyard and underneath runs the underground line, the northern line, 14 metres below. The colour, unlike the colour of the church hall, is in a light maple as opposed to the darker smoked oak reflecting the more formal spaces of the church. The idea here is that music needs space and the walls and the ceiling are asymmetrically folded to stop reflective sound. And it is named after the conductor of the very famous Academy of St. Martin in the Fields, Neville Mariner.